We just got the immigration number for July, and it was quite disappointing. Only 13,645 new permanent residents were admitted to Canada. That's a 63% decline compared to July 2019. Travel restrictions, vacancies, rents dropping. The sky is falling. Let me tell you this. We are going to face a very serious rental shortage after the borders we open. Yes, you heard me right. Rental shortage. Ontario will have an undersupply of 20,000 rental units per year for the next 10 years. It came from the latest rental market report released by the Federation of Rental Housing Providers of Ontario. This report should be a wake-up call to those who influence the development approval process, the CEO says. The supply comes from purpose-built rental buildings and condos, and a typical building has around 200 to 300 units. So if we have an undersupply of 20,000 units per year, that means we would need almost 100 new buildings every year to satisfy the demand. That's crazy! The number is for the whole of Ontario, but we know that the Greater Toronto Area gets around 50% of Ontario's population, and that's only the demand for rental. We have yet to add the demand for sales. So where are these people coming from? There are three main sources of this huge population growth. Of course, if you think that the pandemic is going to drag on and on and our borders will be closed for the next few years, then everything will collapse and this will be our end of conversation. But if you actually believe that the pandemic is only temporary and our borders will be open at some point next year, then let's move on. Number one, immigration. Although the immigration numbers since April have been way below expectations, Canada remains committed to the 2020 to 2022 immigration levels plan. That means the numbers we lost this year will be made up in the next two years. Indeed, our immigration department is expecting a significant surge in immigration applications once global travel restrictions begins to ease. And the government has already put things into actions to prepare for that. On the federal government website, it is calling for proposals to bid the contract on modernizing the process of immigration applications. The winning vendor will develop digital tools that can process a lot more applications than the current manual process. So once the immigration department returns to normal, it will have significantly different policies, procedures, and digital solutions in place to handle the post-coronavirus spikes in applications. Number two, returning Canadians. This is a hidden force driving the housing market. Why do I say hidden? There are currently around 3.5 million Canadians living outside of the country. That's 9% of Canada population. So it is a very significant number. No surprise. The majority of Canadian non-residents live in the United States. Hong Kong has the second largest share. Around 350 to 400,000 Canadians live in Hong Kong. Close to 100,000 are in the UK. So if some of these Canadians start to move back home to Canada, the number can be significant. The question is, how many? The official answer is, we don't know. Because the government does not keep track of the number. It is often buried in the millions of tourists who visit annually. But of course, they are estimates. The deputy chief economist at CIBC Capital Markets says that data trends he observed in 2020 so far indicate roughly 90,000 to 100,000 
more returning Canadians than what we normally see. The global pandemic is one obvious catalyst to this increase. If you look at how Canada handled the pandemic compared to the US and the UK, it is not hard to understand why Canadians want to come home. The political unrest in Hong Kong is another catalyst to the increase. So, returning Canadians can be a substantial hidden force driving the housing market up, especially in popular cities like Toronto and Vancouver. Number 3. International Students Canada is now the world's third leading destination of international students, just after the United States and Australia. We have a staggering 642,000 foreign students and nearly 50% of them study in Ontario. Canada's international student population has tripled in the past 10 years. Again, if you compare how Canada handled the pandemic over other popular international student destinations like the US, Australia, and the UK, it is not hard to imagine that Canada will attract even more international students after the pandemic. You see, we are going to see a completely different picture in the rental market once our borders reopen. I share my opinion and market news every single week. If you want to stay on top of the market, make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the bell now.